So you're calling chapter one of Bitcoin 2009 through today, Bitcoin the asset. And I guess that really uh, is the process of going from zero to one. Bitcoin didn't exist. Now it does. What's chapter two? Well, I think chapter two is going to be incredibly exciting. And chapter two bu bu builds on Bitcoin the asset and it adds Bitcoin the network. In chapter two, Bitcoin the network, it, it solely leverages Bitcoin's proprietariness as an open source monetary network. In chapter one, we reached millions. In chapter two, we're going to reach billions and we're going to do it quickly. And chapter two starts right now. So I'll give you a flavor of chapter two. Say I want to send a thousand bucks, I'm sitting in New York right now, to a friend in Milan, Italy. Strike, Jack Mahler's firm, working with Nidig, takes my dollars and delivers them to my Milan friend in euros instantly and for free. What? Like, how did this happen? So let's go slow. First, Strike takes my dollars from my bank account, my thousand bucks, and they debit it. That's a millisecond. Second, Strike works with Nidig and we do a trade. We convert the thousand dollars into Bitcoin. It's another millisecond or two. Third, Strike, work, Strike works with Lightning Labs and it zips the Bitcoin across the Atlantic Ocean to Milan. We're still in single digit milliseconds, basically instantly. Over there, there's another FX trade. Nidig converts that Bitcoin into euros. We're still in milliseconds. And finally, Strike credits my friend's bank account with final settlement in euros. Done. So what, what just happened? What just happened is a thousand bucks were moved from me in New York to my friend in Milan and converted into euros instantly and for free. How? Because for the first time in history, we have an electronic bearer asset. We've never had an electronic bearer asset. It's called Bitcoin. And an open source monetary network, which we've never had before. It's also called Bitcoin that together can achieve cash finality anywhere in the world, anytime, 24-7, 365, with liquidity in every, any currency pair you care about. And notice something critical in the transaction I described, critical. The volatility of Bitcoin, the asset, was nowhere to be found, right? Why? Because we didn't use it. We didn't use Bitcoin for its properties as an asset. We use Bitcoin for its properties as an open source monetary network. Now, I gave you an example of two friends moving a thousand bucks from New York to Milan. That's, that's cute. It's, it's, it's adorable. Imagine the entire global import export industry with instant and free international settlement, right? Imagine the entire global remittance market with international and free global settlement. Imagine the entire global credit card industry with no merchant fees, right? I mean, use the open source networks of Bitcoin in the open source networks of Lightning. And Bitcoin, the network, will change the way we all interact and connect. This part, chapter two of Bitcoin, this part has nothing to do with monetary policy. This point has nothing to do with central bankers, with dollar depreciation, zero. However, there will be this virtuous, beautiful feedback loop between Bitcoin, the asset, and Bitcoin, the network, and Bitcoin, the asset, and Bitcoin, the network. And working together, the Bitcoin, the asset specialists at NIDIG and the Bitcoin, the network specialists at Strike and Lightning, they're going to get this chapter two flywheel in motion and it is going to hum. It's going to hum. So just stay tuned for more. Okay. That's all inspiring. I'm really excited. Uh, world changing. Bitcoin as the greatest force for good in the world kind of stuff.